and you're just gonna open your body. So you're gonna expand your arms out, open up your legs like a five-pointed star, opening up and taking a deep breath in and hold it. So you're gonna inhale through the nose, fill up your lungs like a balloon, expanding your abdomen, your perineum, your chest, deep breath in through the nostrils. Hold it, hold it. Your arms are separating your legs. You're leaning back. You're feeling so supported. Hold your breath, close your eyes, hold it, pause. And when you can't hold it any longer, you're gonna open your mouth and allow the air to leave your body. And now you're gonna inhale three sniffs, three, one, two, three, through the nose. The third one, just long inhalation. Hold it, separating your 10 fingers, your arms out. It's a total expansion elongation. Hold it, you're doing great. When you can't hold it any longer, open your mouth. Ah. And I want you to think about anything that stressed you out, just maybe so much going on, and you're just gonna inhale, 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 inhale. Hold it, hold it. Think about everything that causes you stress, any worries, deadlines, have to do all this paperwork. When you're ready, you're just gonna, ah! Take your tongue out. You could even shake your arms, like, Ah, whatever you think you're holding in your shoulders. Maybe you've got bills to pay, deadlines, paperwork. Ah, whatever it is, just, ah, and you can aim it towards the window. Inhale, 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 inhale. Sniff, 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 sniff. Hold it. Feeling all that fascia elongating and expanding. Ah. This time, Rob, you're gonna do more sniffs and you're gonna hold it with minimum effort. So you're gonna receive, sniff, sniff, sniff. Sniff, sniff, sniff. Hold it, pause, minimum effort. So you're gonna relax your jaw, relax your neck as you're holding your breath. You're doing great, pause. Ah. And now you're gonna squeeze and relax your perineum, your pelvic floor. Squeeze and relax, squeeze and relax, just like when we orgasm. Squeeze and relax, squeeze and relax. These pulsation type pulsing contractions Squeeze and relax, squeeze and relax, squeeze and relax. You're just bringing all that blood flow down to your hips. Keep breathing, ah, pulsating, contract, relax, contract, relax. Pelvic floor, deep breath in. Energizing your sexual energy glands and then ah. Now you're gonna squeeze and hold your pelvic floor. Hold it, and you're gonna sniff, sniff, sniff. Bring it up to your pineal gland, third eye. Hold it. Energizing all your beautiful chakras. Ah. So this is how you create this beautiful, that intra-abdominal pressure. Squeeze, hold, perineum. Sniff, 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 sniff. Take it all the way up and out through your head, out of your body. And so now notice the space around your body. So you're opening your body, notice the space around your body, your energetic field. We've just expanded your electromagnetic field. Now you're ready to interview rocking like a king. Don't you feel amazing? Yeah, so that's called the E3 breath. It stands for extension, expansion, elongation. Usually we do it with a pillow under the spine so that we create thoracic extension, lumbar extension. The cervical spine is held with a lot of support so that people can feel more open and expansive and reset their nervous system and their breathing 
and just help themselves on all levels because you got to do everything at once. Hmm? What did you say? Yeah, take a, you might want to just pause and close your eyes and just feel how you feel. So this is a vagus nerve activator, parasympathetic nervous system, increasing the oxytocin endorphins, deep breath in. And so let's create an intention that this interview is going to create so many new subscribers to your podcast. They're going to write reviews. They're going to love this show that they're going to be like, yeah, they're going to subscribe to your YouTube channel. Instagram followers. So just imagine yourself. It's like you have honey all over you and there's just all these beautiful little bees swarming and people are just sharing it, friends, passing it over, you know, people reaching out to you for sessions, exploring and for me and just having so much fun doing it. I'm 47. I'm 47 and I feel amazing. I am like, I love myself. Well, this is what I'm saying. Like I do that all the time. I wake up in my bed and I literally open up my body. That's the first thing I do. And I say, I wake up feeling activated, energized, inspired, clear, and focused. I wake up feeling activated, energized, inspired, clear, and focused. And then I touch myself. And I'm just having such a yummy time with myself. And this is what I'm practicing right now. It's the first time in my life that I'm really single, like really single. I'm not getting over anyone. I'm not hurt about something. I'm just really doing me right now. And I'm like really wanting to research self-love. And of course, if someone asks me out, I will say, you know, if I feel it, but I'm not like, I need to meet someone. I need to go on dating apps. You know what I'm saying? Like, I'm not desperate because I feel like I just want to get to know this awesomeness and I really want to get my business automated so that I don't have to show up for my business as much. And then I can travel and do the things I want to do. I want to just work for my laptop and I want to write my books. So I have these visions and I'm prioritizing my life the way I want to create it. And so I feel very empowered. Wow. How recently is this? I mean, this whole year has been about really making space for myself because I have, mm -hmm. I mean, I, I have had different love interests in my life, but I wasn't really wanting one monogamous partner and I just wanted to have fun and explore, which usually women are not allowed to say that, you know, like I have a daughter who's 16. So women don't go around saying that, you know? Yeah, <laughs> I'm sure she loves truth. hearing that, yeah. Yeah, so this is my truth. I'm like, I don't want to have a boyfriend. You know, I had a husband for 20 years and Whoa. I'm divorced eight years. And so I'm very clear on what I want and I don't want to be half-assed. So I'm preparing yeah. myself for an amazing, epic relationship where all my awesomeness is there and I could be present for an amazing, awesome person that you're only going to attract where you're at. So right mm -hmm. now I have, I have plans of what I want to create and do and... I, I feel really great and I want to have so much fun in the journey, you know, because I think I was so serious about it and now I realize, oh, this is meant to be fun. You know, I don't have to be so hard on myself, so I softened a lot. Yeah, this is this is great. So it seems like I, I got to know you at the right time when you became this even more self-actualized in yeah, a way. Yeah, I mean, people Maybe love me for years. It's it, I'm the one that I happen to be like really hard on myself. I expect a lot yeah. from myself, but people are like, you love yourself more now. Like I thought you'd loved yourself 10 years ago. <laughs> you know, like how much more do you want to love yourself? Because some people are like, well, I'm in a, I'm in a relationship and I don't love myself. You know, it's so funny because I just have other standards, but I also feel that I was in a marriage. I was in a relationship and I was in another relationship after that. And so it doesn't motivate me to do the same thing. I, I have a vision of what I want to create. And so, yeah. Yeah. Sometimes you just want to be on your own wavelength, I guess. Right. In the simplest way. That's the way I would put it. Right. So you don't have to have I, anyone. I, I want to be with a partner, but he's got to be my friend first. And yeah, I was in a marriage for 20 years. So it was my high school sweetheart. And I didn't really know anything about the sexuality stuff, like those exercises that I just whipped out. You know, that is amazing to just really amp up your energy and 
you want to use that sexual energy for work, for cooking, for, you know, having an awesome creating program, um, getting organized, having natural energy. So your sexual energy doesn't just have to be to have sex. So I think people get the wrong idea that like I'm having sex with everyone or that I'm having sex all the time. It's <laughs> not true. If anything, I'm more picky and choosy with what I do and how I command my space because of how amazing I feel. And most people aren't at that level. And so yeah. it's interesting, the taboo or the odd, the remarks that people say, oh, you do Tantra, you know, like, are you having sex with everyone, you know? And oh, I'm God. like, well, if everybody was amazing, uh, maybe, but <laughs> it's actually not that easy to meet people like me. Um, and that's why I want to teach people more of this type of, so look, in five breaths, you feel amazing, right? Yeah, I feel pretty good now. I'm yeah. Sure. Yeah, just taking a moment for like headspace is good because I don't ever do that. You know, that's something that I like. Like I was saying earlier, there was um, for, for for telehealth, for physical therapy, there's like a app that I use to to treat people over the Internet. And for some reason, this particular service where you're waiting for the patient to pop on the screen, it'll be like, take a moment to relax, like enjoy the moment because you're sitting in front of the computer waiting for the patient. And usually I would just be like waiting like look or looking at my cell phone but every time i see that i i'm like okay i'm just gonna chill and it's mm -hmm. like 12 seconds and i'm like oh my god i never take 12 seconds i'm always like on to the next thing like it's like i gotta do something i gotta text i gotta check like social media i have to do this and that right so if you could start to do this is the album method this is what i created is you literally are gonna start to lean back throughout your day lean mm -hmm. back before you do an interview, lean back before you have a client, lean back before you start your car. Literally, it's seconds. It's very functional. And you just create an intention. Okay, I'm going to drive to, and I'm going to have an amazing time. Okay, I'm going to talk to this client now. And they're going to have my program. They're going to get my program. They're, they're going to love working with me. They're going to tell all their friends about it. And so when you do that quiet, you're going into you're becoming more wave like mm -hmm. if you're go 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 do it do it do it you're more dense and so when we become more of a wave lean back open you're creating space and energetically more is going to come to you easier more because you're you're leaning back you're actually creating a space for things to fill you up and so it's so amazing because I got these two new clients out of nowhere and I raised my prices and they're fine with it. And it's just amazing. Like the, the alliance, we're totally congruent working together. And that's something that I'm really, um, I value so much my clients working with me that are, that are totally harmonious with what this work is about especially working with sexual energy, if somebody is not really in their integrity about it, if they're not really looking for healing, if they just want to feel pleasure and let my voice guide them and, you know, look at it more as something porn or not that there's anything wrong with porn, you know, I don't want to, but if it's more of a superficial thing, yeah, it is not the same vibration because I'm, my services are for a certain person energetically. And so the more I am that person, the more my clients are just going to come to me. And, and I don't do any paid advertising. Um, I could, you know, and that's my next, right? But really, I'm setting up my programs online and a membership site. And I really want to decrease my live uh, exchange and, and have me more automated groups online. And so I'm clear about that. And so mm. this is where the clarity is going to come when you lean back, when you make the time. And so listening to the meditations that I made before you go to sleep, when you wake up in the morning, those are the best times to do this type of prepping yourself for the day. Mm -hmm. And I'm telling you, it is powerful <laughs> what happens Yeah, because you're so powerful. We are so powerful. Yeah, it kinda, it's like a reset every morning, huh? Yeah, and you're navigating your life rather than being a hamster on a wheel. Trust me, I've done that, so I know what that's like. I've had more years to mess up and learn from something 
And so this is like the best time of my life because I'm like, oh, okay, I'm the one that's causing this. I got to make more time <laughs> to meditate. doing it to myself. Oh, my God. I'm going to make that quiet time. That quiet time is the most important time. How long were you a practicing physical therapist, like in an office running in the hamster wheel? Well, I mean, I had my daughter when I was 31. So I was doing pediatrics for eight years and working in a pediatric center, different, like I worked at different centers, three different. And so I think when I was 25, when I got married, 20, oh, so 30, probably, so 22 to 38 years. And then I had my daughter, so I, I, and I was also a yoga teacher, so I was teaching yoga, and I went more into teaching yoga when I became a mom, and I was teaching prenatal yoga and doing pediatrics as a PT when I was pre my daughter, so mm -hmm. probably just um, 10, 11 years at the most, okay. and then after my daughter, I breastfed her for two years. I didn't really want to go back to work and I, and I wasn't really ever really the traditional PT. And so I just started to incorporate yoga and I, and everybody loves yoga with me because nobody gets hurt and it's super efficient. And then I became an energy healer and I worked at an integrated medicine center, the Canyon ranch, and they hired me as an energy healer. So I got to work energetically but I was still a physical therapist, but I wasn't practicing physical therapy as we know it. And so I just thought, why don't I teach everybody how to harness their own energy themselves rather than me just put my hands over their body. That's typical energy healing. And let me train them. Let me teach them. And so that's really how this work evolved into you being your own source of commanding your energy and feeling amazing. And I'm just on the phone with you, guiding you. Yeah, that would take years and years of experience, it sounds like, because being a PT is one thing, but the amount of modalities that I see you using, like on your social media at least, is yeah. insane. Like I saw you doing something the other day with the, the sound therapy, right, mm -hmm. where you're like hitting the gong. And... I have it if you want me to do a little demo. <laughs> so many demos. I mean, I'm down for whatever. I love the but... flute. Yeah, I drum over people's bodies. So oh, people that are thing. angry, emotions... They could just, ah, you know, they just let it out. Like a Cathartic. lot of people with chronic pain. So did you want to like start the interview or? Do you oh, yeah. No, this is, I've been recording all this. I was making it. Is that okay if I use everything? Because this is pretty of course, natural. Of course. Yeah, I figured you'd be okay with it. Yeah. Usually I like make that intro thing, but I don't want to cut you off because you're saying a lot of yeah, good well, stuff. Yeah, well, let's do a little intro. I mean, I, I, I would love it. Yeah, this will be the official intro. Yeah, yeah right. Welcome to HealthCast 305. This is Dr. Rob Pulis, like a physiologics, physical therapy, yeah. and wellness. Your wellness coach, your PT, all that good stuff. I'm here for you. Today we have Michelle Alva. She's a uh, she does a lot of things. I actually wrote up a little uh, I wrote up a little uh, intro for you. I think I combined some of the stuff you were saying. So I said that you hold frequent events and online regarding everything from pregnancy, abundance mindset, emotion elevation, essential oils, um, emotions, and how they interact with other things and then i said saucy and fun topics that threw me off but yeah they are saucy and fun topics i'm not sure if you said that or if that's how i said it to be funny i don't know yeah i think well, i made that up yeah. <laughs> and i said please welcome to the show live coach nlp and hypnosis expert michelle alva so that's you that's my yeah. little intro for you and, and that I'd seems love to scratch mention the surface to the, the physical therapy connection we have like i graduated from fiu and probably about 24 years ago. So my background is as a physical therapist. And then I became a yoga teacher. I really loved yoga. And when I graduated physical therapy school, I was a little upset because we never talked about emotional pain. We never talked about chakras, energy. And so I thought to myself, we're just looking at the body as muscles, bones, and joints. But I learned from Dr. Joe Dispenza, you know, I've taken a lot of courses from him, quantum physics, epigenetics and how our mindset creates the genetic expression. And so the more we are nurtured as children, there's a book called Genie in Your Genes. People, when they're 40, 50, 60, have a certain genetic expression or chronic diseases they're more prone to if they were not nurtured as babies. And I used to work with children and I became an infant massage instructor. Then I worked with pregnant women. And so the way a pregnant woman is, if she's really stressed out, 
her child at age 40, 50, 60 is going to have more prone to chronic diseases than if she does yoga Jeez. and meditates when she's pregnant. And so I thought to myself, wow, you know, if we want to change the world, we really, it behooves us to really nurture pregnancy time, but even before pregnancy time, right? Yeah. And so I was so inspired and I love what I learned from primal health. And so I, I traveled all around and I just love to learn and I really love hypnosis and neurolinguistic programming because I can influence people to release chronic pain with my words over the phone and teaching them how to expand their fascia as I just taught you and using their breathing and expanding their respiratory capacity, moving energy through their system. And then Tantra is something that I learned in the last three, four years that harnessing your sexual energy can shift your pain perception and your pleasure perception and your nervous system. And so I know it's very taboo, but I've discovered that chronic emo uh, pain, you know, pain that people have had for 20 years, 10 years, it's just nothing really helps them, which I'm sure you know those clients, right? Yeah. That we just want to help them, but, but it's like, okay, there's absolutely nothing wrong physically. What do I do, you know? And going to the psychotherapist is not going to necessarily help them because they really do need an embodiment work. And so this is where the Alva method, this process of self-discovery, emotional empowerment, I call it now, because so many of us are not emotionally empowered. We stuff down our emotions. We have shame and guilt. We have resentment. And we don't show it because that's not something you really want people to know, right? That yeah. you're still getting over someone or you're not really healed or forgiven something. And so we just kind of ignore it, but it's affecting your shoulders, it's affecting your libido, it's affecting your sleep. It's this unseen. But when we address it, people leave and they don't have any pain or they're like, oh my God, my shoulders feel so light. And they'll start to cry and they'll say, how is this possible, Michelle? Like, and they'll touch themselves and they're like, oh my God, like my muscles are soft. And then they'll start to cry and as if, wow. who is this body that I'm in? And how is this possible? What are you doing to me? You know, and I'm, I, it's not me. I'm guiding people. So it's really exciting. And I used to hold chronic pain in my, you know, down mm -hmm. there. <laughs> I don't know if it was G-rated. Yeah. And so I had sexual trauma when I was 14 and I was raised Catholic. And so I thought you're supposed to have sex after you're married. But this yeah. teenager was, you know, things happened and I just, I didn't, I didn't know how to say no. And I let, I would let boys like bully me or tease me or, and then I would just freeze and, and tighten up. And so that same thing happened to me. And I thought, oh my God, I'm going to have to marry him. God doesn't love me anymore. I was only oh, no. 14 years old. So I put all this drama, trauma, perception narrative that I'm damaged goods. And, and I literally became tense in my perineum. And I, I was holding emotions down there for like 14 years of my life, because 14 years later, I actually released that chronic pain that I used to have. And that's a whole other story that I'm not going to go into too deeply. But if anybody wants to know, there's videos on my YouTube channel where I share <laughs> my story. And that's yeah. what taught me that I am energy and I can hold emotions and I can release them. And so can my clients. And so I was a little bit like resentful towards physical therapy. And I was grateful for yoga because it addressed mm -hmm. the emotions, the chakra system. So I was very judgmental and I was kind of like, well, I'm going to learn how to do this type of emotional release. You know, what is this? What happened to me? And I'm energy. And where do I go learn this? You know, where? So I learned shamanism, therapeutic touch, psyche mindset change processes, neurolinguistic programming, hypnosis, and then Tantra is just like the cherry on top because it's all about energy and opening your heart and opening your every single <laughs> part of you, you know, just opening yeah. to all of who you are. And that's what I really wish to share with people wherever they're at to begin to offer people a space where they could feel everything. Because I really feel that that's the key. It's really not complicated mm -hmm. to just hold a space. That's why it's so important for physical therapists to feel safe. For, for a client to feel safe, 
Sometimes I think that's the most healing thing we could ever do is for someone to just not feel judged. And I think that's, yeah. that's something I can tell that you have a really big heart, Rob. That you really, you really must be an amazing PT, you know, like kudos for you for caring so much <laughs> too and wanting people to come onto your show, helping people in wellness, healing, you know, that's a really special person. So I'm really grateful to be here and just have this space where I can share because this work that I do is not, not traditional by any means. And it's almost like we, the experts, we get our degrees and we are seen as the experts. And so what I decided was, what if I saw each of my clients as the expert of themselves? And what if I just guided them inside to their wisdom to access the quiet? And it's amazing the clarity that comes out of people that they realize, wow, I've been holding my ex-husband in my belly for years. You know, it's really <laughs> amazing the stories that we hear. Or I've been holding my uncle who touched me the wrong way here and I'm ready to let that go. And then they don't have the pain anymore. So it's really incredible how we do know how we can serve ourselves. It's just people are not looked at like that, you know? And so I'm really grateful that I was so codependent before in my life that I found out about being interdependent and how to heal codependency and how you can actually help yourself so much more than what a lot of the norm out there is teaching us. And so this is what it's about. It's not for everyone because some of us actually aren't ready to feel better. So I assumed everybody would want to work doing this type of work, yeah. you know, and not have pain anymore. But sometimes people are like, I don't believe you, you know, do you have any testimonials? You know, it's almost too good to be true. And so it's really cute how sometimes I have clients come in and they're like, I heard about you five years ago, but I don't know. It just felt too good to be true, but I've tried everything and I'm still having the same symptoms. So what can you do for me? You know, it's, it's been really fun to be around for so long now that people can actually say that. And, um, yeah, your yeah. referral base gets bigger and they, there's more, there's more like pre-qualification because people know that you work for someone else and it worked for them. So they kind of come in at least Proof of concept. I'm sure when you started, yeah. it was, it was a lot more difficult because people were probably more, what is this? Like, these are all these weird things. You're going to make me feel better. I don't know. I, I get enough of that with PT. I can't <laughs> imagine what it's like to be like a PT who does a lot of these concepts that people don't even think about when they're in pain for a long time. Yeah. I mean, pleasure therapy. I, I would love to actually create a whole new profession called a pleasure therapist, a parasympathetic nervous system amplifier, an oxytocin booster therapist guide that just, that's all we do is teach people how to harness their oxytocin because that's what I've been my own research study. And I swear, I feel like I glow more. I definitely feel more oxytocin high person. And I don't, I don't drink coffee. I don't do drugs. I don't drink alcohol. I feel great just being with my breath, I definitely make time to pleasure myself definitely during the week. And I would say probably every other day I spend time being intimate with myself and I love my body. I love feeling. And so at this point in my, my life, I feel good inside me literally and mm -hmm. externally. And I used to feel contracted. I used to feel chronic tension. I used to feel weighed down and burning. I remember my back would be burning because I was exhausted, my adrenals. And so now I make time to just lean back. I, I live right in front of the ocean, Key Biscayne. You know, I live in heaven on earth. And so I have decided to reassess my life, and, and especially this year. And I just, I'm no longer going to be a martyr. I'm no longer a doormat. I don't let myself be treated, my clients before me, which if anybody would call me and like, oh my God, I need to see you today, Michelle, please. I would just sneak, you know, put them in my schedule, give up seeing my daughter. So now I look at my schedule like a step back and what do I wish to do now? And so I rarely now work on the weekends, only if like people come from out of town, usually, you know, or it's really gotta be a special, you know, because I realize 
it's so important for me to have my life, my time, yeah. my, it's healthy for me because then I get resentful. And so mm -hmm. before I was just for everyone, I was, I was there for everyone and nobody values you when you're like that. It's amazing. Yeah. Now I raise my prices. I really give 110% when you're with me, you're going to have life changing experiences even over the phone with me because I take such great care of myself and because we're energy, people can feel my, my orgasmic energy. You know, people can feel my joy. People can feel how much I have chosen to prioritize myself that it's almost contagious. They're like, I want to feel like you like, I just <laughs> yeah. want put you in a bottle and drink it. You know, <laughs> <laughs> your best selling point is your, is just you. I mean, if, if it's, that's the thing. It's like, do you get dietary advice from someone that's like morbidly obese? You know, it's, it's the same thing with someone in your profession. It's like if you are walking the walk and talking the talk, like I would trust you just from talking to you. It's like you're, you're your own walking billboard. <laughs> yeah. And honestly, what I've learned, like I took so many courses. I remember craniosacral therapy, uh, myofascial release, uh, mo mobilization courses, right? Like, I always wanted to take a course because I never yeah. felt good enough. I didn't feel good enough. And I was focusing externally. And so in the last couple of years, I, my life pretty much crumbled because I was going, going, going on the hamster wheel and I wasn't feeling the results, you know, the, and so I literally had to stop and just pause. And I'm so happy for COVID because it also caused me to work more virtually. And so I think it's so great for us to pause throughout the week, throughout the day, and like really just step back and, and assess your life and say, well, what kind of a life do I wanna have? How much time do I wanna spend with my clients, with my, with my daughter, you know, with my, with my family, with my partner, you know, whoever those relevant people are. And, and so before I never asked myself, what do I really want? I just thought I was supposed to be there for everyone. I just assumed make people happy and then you'll be happy and so i almost felt selfish saying what do i really want what what really matters to me and it, and it's been difficult for me because also i i feel i used to ask my ex-husband you know what do you want me to do please someone tell me what to do you know <laughs> <laughs> and so i think owning my sovereignty self-governance that is like massive important for us and i think it's really sexy too i think a man really loves it and a woman when you have your own life and you have your own whatever that is, you know, it makes it more interesting and fun rather than somebody just doing everything you want. Yeah, that's right. What, that's, what, I think what, that's... I, what I think is, is, uh, yeah. No, I think that's true. You hear like the classic line from, from girls or boys who break up with their significant other is like, oh my God, like they were so like dependent on me for everything. Like I needed to do this, this and that for them. Um, not something that I've experienced, but you know, other people. Have You're way said too that, interesting, right? Rob. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'm interesting. Yeah, I don't know about that. Maybe, maybe I'm interesting. I guess it depends on how I tell my story. But yeah, I think that it's it's a good point. It's like, it's like if you own your if you own your stuff and that's who you are, then then everything I think things come to you better. It's like as much as you want to reach and reach and reach and and have those people like you it doesn't really get you anywhere. Like you were saying about the weekends, like I, I recently like committed to not working on the weekends because it is, um, it's a losing game to want to work on the weekends for, for me at least because I get no repair time. Like if I have to work at like a 10 a.m. on a Saturday, that means I have to go to bed early on Friday and I have to be like concerned about treating the patient for like one patient on Saturday. And then Sunday I might have something in the morning as well. So it's just like, then the, then it's like 14 days straight of work, right? So it's like, you have to take care of yourself first. It really is amazing, don't you think? Like that to me is so important. Hopefully people, I'd love to, you know, make sure you go to Rob's, you're on iTunes, right? I'm on, I'm on Spotify. And then obviously this is on YouTube and then right. yeah, Spotify and YouTube are the big ones. I think iTunes, it might be on iTunes soon Spotify. enough. I haven't, awesome. haven't updated it though. Yeah, make yeah. sure to make sure to subscribe to his channel and yeah. on Spotify too. And cause I'm so excited about all these interviews and, and I was looking at the others in the past and how I could tell you really are putting the time and energy to have amazing 
interviews and people to interview. And so that, you know, you're working already with your clients and then the podcast and, and Lord knows what other things, right? And so mm -hmm. for us to really give and deliver something from that place of completeness, wholeness, we're actually serving people by, by coming from this place because they're getting to see what that feels like. And so this is something I didn't realize before, how my presence is healing. My presence is a modality, you see? Yeah. This is how I'm being. And I noticed with my 16-year-old daughter how the more grounded I am, the more present I am, the more I'm here, she feels safer. She, she's more inspired rather than me all over the place scattered. That's uh, not feel safe. You don't trust those people. And so the, this is a really wonderful thing to, to just emphasize. And yeah, definitely. To hold space for ourselves. You know, this is a thing with chronic pain and stress. A lot of times we're not really w able to hold space to just be available to ourselves. We want to avoid feeling the pain. We want to avoid really... And, and it's protecting ourselves. You know, we're so great at protecting ourselves. So having a lot of compassion for that part of us that wants to leave ourselves, right? Mm -hmm. But a lot of the work that I do is about creating that space so that we can actually be able to feel and process and then release and, and transmute those little things that have been holding for many, many years that actually they become big things. And so there's different techniques and I'd love to share some if, if you know, whatever you want to focus on. <laughs> no, I would love to, I'd love to hear them. I mean, do you have the time? I don't want to take, because I remember earlier you said like 30 minutes. I don't want to. Yeah. Well, it's our time right now. We're at 724. Yeah. Let's, so, so one, so one strategy for yourself to really calm your nervous system and start mm -hmm. to create space, which a lot of this is about embracing your feminine energy. Whether you're a man or a woman, it doesn't matter. We all have feminine and masculine energies. And a lot of times we're running and going, going in, the, in an yeah. unhealthy masculine dominated Definitely. energy. And so anybody could do this any time of the day. You're sitting in your chair in your office. Let's just say your, your neck, your shoulders starts to feel tense. You can lean back into your chair and you could put your palms on your lap like this. So I'm going to put them on my lap. And you just look up and you take a deep breath in. And you ask yourself, what am I grateful for? What am I grateful for? And you could do three breaths. And of course, you can be grateful for yourself. Lifting up that chin, opening up that throat. Maybe you're just grateful that you remembered to pause. I'm grateful that I'm pausing right now. I'm, I'm going in my feminine, my restoration. Three breaths, five breaths, and that's it. And then get back on your keyboard. And so you're giving yourself this programming that you take breaks. And then you could set your timer for every hour, three breaths, that's it, every hour. And the other one is when you go to the bathroom, washing your hands, you know how we all wash our hands, we're doing it so often. Yeah. Look, look in the mirror, every single time you wash your hands in the bathroom, look in the mirror and just say, I love you. I'm oh, wow. so grateful for you. I'm That's so something grateful. that guys probably want to be so good at, right? You're hot. You could tell yourself, you're a great lover. <laughs> <laughs> you last <could> longer. <laughs> <laughs> Take off my shirt and start flexing in the mirror. <laughs> That's, yeah, that's so my way. Washing your hands. The other one you could do is what do you want to wash off yourself? What do you want to take off? So let's just say you're pissed off, you're frustrated, you're angry. Yeah. You could do cleansing breaths. So these are all rituals. When I did my shamanic apprenticeship, basically shamanism is all rituals. Intention plus action. So the action is washing the hands, you're washing away. You could even like just, you know, what is it that I'm holding on to that I just, ah, oh, I get so frustrated. I tell myself that I'm so frustrated. And you just do your cleansing. And so these are rituals that break the cycle. They break that hamster wheel. And yeah. remember, you're at the desk, lean back. Three breaths, five breaths. What am I grateful for? Why do I say, what am I grateful for? Because there's literally research, scientific research that shows that being grateful 
helps your immune system, helps your sleep. You guys can look it up on Google, Benefits of Gratitude. It's been <laughs> researched. And gratitude so, journaling. Yes, gratitude journaling. But these are like little quickie fixes. The other one is every red light, everybody drives. you got to be in your car. Every red light, you're going to think about something you love about yourself, you're grateful about yourself, or send love out to someone. Always begin with yourself. So remember, red light, red for love. And, then, <laughs> and so that's something, if all you yeah. do is that, you're yeah. injecting yourself with oxytocin endorphins throughout the day, rushing from one meeting to the other or wherever you're mm -hmm. going, you're going to wind up having a red light. And you can remember me, Red Light Rochelle. Think there about your gratitude. Think about what you love about yourself. And so some people are like, love myself. Oh, God, that's so gay. You know, whatever know. people, people are so say. afraid of that stuff. But the thing is, the love hormone, I've studied this a lot, the love hormone. My hair's thicker. My skin's glowing. I'm more radiant. And, and I'm not taking anything. You know what I'm saying? We yeah. have this neurohormone inside of us. It's just that a lot of us, we're so, when you judge, criticize, analyze, when you're in worry mode or you're frustrated with yourself or hard on yourself, all of those, I've been all of those, you are having a lot of cortisol. And cortisol tenses up our intestines, it lowers our libido, it tenses up our heart, it ages us cortisol. And so that's a motivator to stop judging, criticizing, analyzing and worrying. And so what can you do? Acceptance, compassion, love, and forgiveness. I call it CALF, C-A-L-F. Okay. Compassion, acceptance, love, and forgiveness. Compassion, acceptance, love, and forgiveness. forgiveness. C-A-L-F. And so that's something that I've focused on and I want to always come back to it when things don't go your way. You know how sometimes we get frustrated and we're like, ah, yeah. So you could just start to say, okay, what can I learn from that? How can I grow from that? And just not judge it. I know judgment really well. I got a PhD in judgment and it's so heavy because judgment literally cuts off your love line. You can't be in love mode when you're judging. You're not accepting whatever it is that you're judging. And so that's an energetic feeling. And I'm sure everybody knows what judgment feels like, just like jealousy, um, being judged, right? When somebody's like, oh my God, you know, it's like, a yeah, it's the worst. It's a yeah. shrinking. It shrivels you up. And so acceptance, I accept you. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I accept myself. <laughs> I forgive myself. And so literally I have reprogrammed and reframed myself. Thank God for NLP and hypnosis. And so today I get to enjoy myself even when I'm not doing these things like believe me i judge i criticize i analyze i just don't spend dips of time in it i get out of it easier i'm more resilient and so i don't want to i don't want to hurt myself anymore i don't like the suffering everywhere it's rampant it's like we're addicted to suffering we're yeah. addicted to martyrdom persecution putting people down criticizing them like all those magazines of gossip it's oh my not God. healthy for us yeah and so it's almost like an, it's an addiction. And, and trust me, I'm a recovering drama queen, you know, and I'm, <laughs> and I'm learning like, wait a minute. Wow. You know, maybe I could study fun and pleasure more. You know, like my inner child thought she had to work. You know, I worked since I was like 12 years old. I worked in high school. You know, my mom was a single mom raising three kids. And, and she had three jobs and I had to work after high school. Literally, the minute Jeez. I would leave. I would go to work. And so I don't think I really genuinely got to play and people like people buy me things. And so I've always had to be a strong woman that's doing everything. And by the time I was 37, I hit my midlife crisis because I became this machine and very masculine, even though I may look feminine. And so I really didn't know my feminine until after my divorce, you know, and that's really what I've been studying more. Love is the feminine energy, nurturing, kindness, self-care, seeing time for yourself as a priority because you're a king and you're a queen. And this is how I see myself today. And it's just changed my life. And, it, and I'm able to serve people with chronic pain, anxiety, people that feel that re they're really stuck and they've tried everything. Those are the clients that are perfect for me.
Yeah, when you when you speak about masculine and feminine energy, are there positives to the masculine one? Of I'm course, assuming there are. masculine is organized. <laughs> I focused, just want to hear that. Yeah. Responsible. Yes, we can't. You know, action. That is the masculine, goal oriented, and mm-hmm. so the feminine is surrender, allow, intuition, trust open be receptive and so the thing is that we have unhealthy feminine and unhealthy masculine rampant in our world the masculine is awesome we can't have that beautiful the two of us within ourselves so Mm -hmm. it's this dance between the masculine and the feminine receiving and giving and so a lot of people we're not balanced we're not harmonious with ourselves and that's what we're seeing like with power in the world even with sexual energy, misuse of our own sexual energy with all this pedophilia, you know, this stuff happening with um, all those things in the news that we've seen recently with misuse of sexual energy, sexual power, right? Mm-hmm. Yeah. And so the, the sex trafficking, the Epstein, you know, all these things that we're obviously not using our sexual energy in a productive, expansive, healthy way. There's a misuse and so yeah. children, they're so open. Children are so full of life and full of that creative energy. They just flow it. They're free. And so as we get older, I think we suppress it. We, we, we like shrink, not everyone, but so Tantra, you know, hypnosis, NLP, this embodiment work that I do, it brings us back into knowing our inner child and that childlike state of wonder and heal, you know, a lot of the childhood wounding that we've had in the body so Mm -hmm. it's not a replacement for psychotherapy it's for people that are holding that chronic pain that they've gone to physical therapy acupuncture chiropractor taken the medicine for pain and they're still having the pain and that's what i'm talking about today is emotional pain and how to what's like what's like an ideal classic patient that you or client that you come in contact with somebody that's had chronic pain for years and they've done everything and they're still Mm -hmm. in pain and then what do we discover I teach them the E3 breath, what I taught you, expanding the body. It's a guided process of your own activating. And then I guide them into the body map, the body awareness. And so I I ask them, where are you feeling pain, tension, tightness? And then I teach them how to commune with those parts and gain the wisdom from whatever it is that that was meant to teach them. And so, for example, there was a woman that had 40 years of pain in her bladder area and they actually told her she had to have her uterus taken out that that was what was causing pain i've had three clients like that that the doctor tells her you know it's your uterus we should take it out and probably you know things happen as people get older and then they feel terrible because they had the uterus taken out and it's still hurting and so then they come for a session this has happened with three different people and one of them in the one session she released 40 years of holding chronic pain and she actually said she wished to learn how to do this type of work to serve others and she studied a lot with me and it's just amazing because things from our past like sexual trauma when an uncle touches us or a father you know wants to have sex with us it really messes up a person's psyche and so we lock those memories it's inappropriate we know it's wrong and so let's just say that that was pleasurable because we're getting touched in those parts and so then children feel shame that oh my god how could it feel good for my dad to touch me no you know so then we Mm -hmm. judge ourselves and we put this cover up of shame and so there's i mean there's many stories that over the the many years i've been working with people with trauma the the things that happen to children you know that even parents the girl will tell her mother, mommy, your boyfriend is hitting on me. And the mom doesn't want to hear it because she doesn't have a job. You know, she's dependent on him. And so there's these horrific stories of things that have happened. And then how does that child cope with it? They act out. You know, there's many different ways people cope, children. Mm -hmm. And then we wonder why they develop fibroids, fibromyalgia, you know, children that have been beaten and they just internalize all that pain. It has to go somewhere. And so I really wish that there could be a a separate emotional release guide therapist. You know, that's why I created the Alva Method, because we're really working on emotional empowerment and navigating how to release and process. And it's not just a mental thing. It's 
an embodiment thing because it's in your tissues. And so it's not enough to just do hypnosis, which is awesome. It's so beneficial for a person to actually commune with that body part mm -hmm. and get to know it instead of avoiding it. Because this is what happens a lot. Some women, they literally will never have sex again. They just shut down their sexual oh, energy. God. They say, I don't want to have kids. They're 50 years old. Like I had a client who was so sad because she realized that around 46, she's like, you know what? I do want to have a child, but I think it's because of my mother and how she treated me that I just haven't wanted to have a child. And I can't believe that my wounding has caused me to not want to have a child. And I don't want to take that away from myself. And so there's people that are living, not wanting to have kids. They think yeah. because of the woundedness, because they're stuck in that frozen state and doing the best they can. And so those are the people that develop, they have like heart, um, I've seen this happen. I'm not generalizing it to everyone, but some people that have like panic attacks, they don't understand why they're having this, like something wants to come out of them. And, and then we call it panic attacks or when they're going to go to sleep, they, they start to have these. So the emotions are actually wanting to process, but we, we were holding that we're just holding for years. And it's like a pot of boiling water. You have the lid on for so long. Oh gosh. And it starts to shake, you know, it starts to, it has to go somewhere. And so it's just too many times I've seen there's a diagnosis of something and then there's an emotional pattern. And I mean, Louise Hay wrote a whole book, Heal Your Body, about this, how we hold emotions in the body. And so I just really wish we could acknowledge that more. And so when a doctor sees someone who comes in that nothing is helping them and they've had the pain for 20 years, amping up their medicine dose is just not the solution. You know, this is what I <laughs> yeah. wish. Um, and then, oh my gosh, in one session, they could clear that and then stop having to take all that medication. And so I'm not saying it's a replacement, but what if we could work together, empowering people to navigate through going to those places in the body and then teaching them how to release and process and free themselves. And so that when people are in charge of themselves, they actually do much better because I'm not doing it to you. So you doing you, you already are feeling more comfortable with yourself. You're building up your own confidence. And so it's really magical. I'd love to share it with you someday if you want. Yeah, that sounds awesome. I mean, it's, it's stuff that like I'm completely unfamiliar with. I'm like, that's that's a whole different ball game. That's like a parallel universe. That I haven't even attempted to work with anyone with you know i mean there's natural parts to being a good physical therapist that obviously you know that maybe cross over like your like your patient therapist relationship that you just develop by being friendly to them or by putting your hands on them and doing like a massage or soft tissue work mm -hmm. but there's all which is what you know chiropractors are there the way they crack people's backs like that's a big thing yeah right? so to actually ask your client okay tune into your gut you know tune into your perineum Mm -hmm. breathe into your perineum expand and just notice what arises and so the other thing is nothing has to arise but sometimes w i've had a woman literally i i used to do pelvic floor physical therapy and so i literally had my finger inside her vagina and i just moved my finger a little bit on the side wall and there was a massive tight 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 trigger point there like a fascia you know just very fibrotic Bundle, yeah. vagina and you know, it's a smooth muscle, but some women are walking around with super tight vagina, painful vagina. And so it move, I move my finger like a micrometer and I ask her to breathe. So rather than me work on her, which is how we're taught, I, I just would be gentle in my feminine and ask her to breathe. Do you feel that? Okay, can you? Ah, and so it takes time. It's not yeah. seconds for her to just, and then she literally started crying because she said, oh, my God. And then she had a memory come up about something that happened with her uncle. Oh man. And she just started crying. And I just, I breathe. So I'm not judging. I, I, I said, can, I, can, I, can we stay here? Can we just breathe here? Ah. And then eventually, I swear to you, there was nothing, no trigger point. Yeah, like just like fascia, any other... The yeah. fascia just, 
it just unwound itself. And so the body knows how to heal itself. There was a non-judgmental witnessing of what that was. I didn't get nervous. I just breathed. I facilitated the safe. She cried. She felt safe enough. And so it's amazing to me how you can release muscles. Physical can shift in seconds under my hands, you know, just like, okay, whoa, to the point where I am like, how is this upper chest totally melted? So cool. And then I realized because we're energy. And so I also tone into the body and that's a whole other interview using sound healing. So vibration, you could act, it's like an ultrasound. You could actually yeah. vibrate into the muscles. And that's really fun for couples because I teach couples Tantra. Um, and you could also vibrate into the perineum, into the prostate. Oh my gosh. Yeah, it goes straight up to the... To Is the that path. the same note for everyone? Well, it's just toning. You, you put your mouth down there. So this is what I teach couples to have oh. fun <laughs> yeah. expanding that Kundalini energy. Yeah, it's like you could do so many beautiful things that are in with the right intention, you know, of expanding your energy because that's the vagus nerve. It goes shoo, right through and it just clears all your organs. And so there's so many things that we can create when we trust, when we feel safe, when we realize we're energy. And so really, it doesn't have to take you so long to become softer and more supple in your body because you actually are energy. And so if we use more of these techniques, then we, we become wizards. We feel like we're a sorceress and a sorcerer and very mm -hmm. magical. And we're defying the laws of physics, like the laws of physical. It's really cool. Yeah. Yeah. Like at least with like PT, right? The way we're taught is very mechanical. That's like the number one thing, mechanical, mechanical, mechanical. And then that you start thinking about pain science and all the stuff that I learned after the fact. And I'm like, oh, there's more to this. There's that more. Pain is all in your head. It really is yeah, all in your head. It really, your brain manifests it. But I love my physical therapy background. I love biomechanics, kinesiology. Mm. I love it all. And it's also awesome to know when it's an emotional pain and it's a musculoskeletal pain. There was literally something they're doing. So if you're if you're typing all day and you have carpal tunnel, let's let's work on the mechanical. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, exactly. And so that's the other part is where we don't want to over emotionalize things. It's really I, I mean that's what I love about me is I know when when it's what because I I've been doing this for so long and I have that background. And so I think it's I think it's awesome to have all of it. The, the combination, yeah. you know, the, the intuitive and the masculine and the feminine. Not just yeah, you're, the reductionistic. Exactly. You're armed with like the whole, the whole, uh, what do they call that? The whole bathtub there. You can do anything you want. I mean, and this all started after, so you, you grad, you worked for a few years. You took that time off with the breastfeeding and all that. And then you started adding in these arrows in your quiver. So now you have yeah, it's more. Really the chronic pain in my cervix I, I had deep internal chronic pain in my i thought sex was painful that's what happened to me i used to hold a lot of pain and that was from the sexual trauma i had but really i discovered that it was a lot of shame i, I literally was ashamed of what happened to me i was hiding all the time and so if you imagine like if you're if your relative is touching you inappropriately even though you're at the park there's that it's like you hold these hurts in your body that they don't let you have a happy birthday and i and i'm sure people are listening and you can relate to something that's happened to you when you were a child that because of that one event it just we go into this guarding mode and you'd be amazed how many people say i had sexual trauma too yeah my my cousin touched me my babysitter my i mean i've heard so many stories and they say one out of every three women in the united states have had some type of inappropriate touch so walking around in a room, you're at a party, one out of every three, and I don't know what the statistic is for men, but I've worked with a lot of men too that have had a lot of sexual trauma things happen to them. And, and so I have so much compassion today for people. Like everybody's walking around and if somebody's not nice to you, please have compassion for them because you don't know what that person went through. And let me tell you, it's so hard to walk around hiding. And so, I'm really grateful to have stepped out of the norm and, and been wild enough to seek out other ways because of all the people that I'm able to serve in that way. Yeah, 
Were you like this and when you were studying in school? Were you were you into this stuff too? Or people I was like, vegetarian. Wow, she's really... Yeah, I was vegetarian when I was 15 years old because I had to work and I got a job at a restaurant, the Unicorn Village in Aventura, and I was a hostess at age 15. I was working. I got a, I got a job by the grace of God. You know, I had to work and help out my mom. And my mm. ex, the person I was with at the time, the owner came and sat right next to me. He goes, I want you to be the hostess for this restaurant. And I was like, what? And I was only 15 years old. And he said to me, yep, that's what I want. And I was, I, I loved how empowered he was, you know? And, and I told him, well, I'm only 15. And he said to me, it's okay. Cause I was actually going to become 16 soon. And so it was kind of like he was paying me under the table and I can say all this now, you know, it's just years yeah. ago. But I felt so proud that I was the hostess at the restaurant. So I was vegetarian since I was 15 years old. I would eat there all the time. And that changed my life, you know. So that and then I started yoga when I was like 17 years old at Hollywood Memorial Hospital. They, they are, or no, no, actually it was in Young Circle in Hollywood. There was this uh, Bikram yoga and it was sweaty. And the teacher was this little guy. Ronnie, I think his name was. And I remember seeing like little beats of sweat down his like little speedos and thinking yeah. how adorable, you know, he's so happy. Yeah. I want to be like that. I want to be happy like that. And so I became a yoga junkie, Bikram yoga, pushing myself to open up my legs. And like, I remember I, my neck would hurt me so much after the class because I was pushing myself, like trying to prove to myself that I'm good enough. And so that's a whole other story. So yoga was always in my life in the beginning and meditation. And um, I used to also try to bend metal. Like I used to sit there and look at the spoon. I was never <laughs> able to do it, but I always was interested in the power of my mind. Yeah, you were thinking like that. Please, I mean, I remember hey. watching David Blaine videos and I tried. I was like, man, he did that. I feel like if I look hard enough, I can just do it. We really can do so many things that I mean, I'm 47 and, and I can't believe it. I really, I say this with so much love towards that age because I thought it was a different. And so I'm living proof that we really are whatever we believe we are. And I feel really healthy. Um, I'm really grateful every day. I really feel my life is magical. And I wish that for everyone. When I see, turn on the TV and, which I don't have a TV, but when I go to my mom's, it's already on. And, and mm -hmm. I see like all this suffering global, and okay, how, yeah. like I wish I could tell people let's just close our eyes and imagine a new world and I have a meditation on my YouTube channel envisioning a new world creating a new world together because how many of us really take the time to just lay there and envision where we actually are all loving the planet creating things that support us to thrive where no one is hungry at the end of the day where, where there's collaboration and unity and oneness and so I, I stand for that and I see it, even though whatever else is going on, because I know I'm a powerful person and I've, I'm owning that. And so I don't have anything to be sad about. I'm just going to get more inspired to speak out. Do you see public figures and, and on the news and stuff that you're like, man, this person could use some of my services? I think Donald Trump would benefit from a Tantra session. <laughs> oh my God. I love the teacher that, that. expanded sexual energy. <laughs> In a loving, healthy, connected... Him and Melania. Yeah. yeah, like all the politicians. You know, when you look at people's faces, when a person has a stiff face, which, I mean, that's the other thing with Botox and everything. Like, I've never had Botox. I don't do anything for my skin other than go to the beach. Um, it's, it's amazing. Like, a woman that is smiley, you could tell, like, with your jaw. You know the accessory nerve to the vagus nerve? Mm -hmm. When we do, ah, when we're orgasming, when a woman, ah, you know, we start to do this, ah, you know, all that energy is moving up. And I'm talking about Tantra energetic. Her face starts to flush and she yeah. starts to get all this blood flow. And so she's getting her Botox naturally. <laughs> she's having those, those wrinkles fade instead of, a woman like this is a non-orgasmic woman that needs the Botox. So I really believe orgasm, and that would be an amazing profession, is let me teach you how to orgasm. The headache will go away. You're going to have more energy, you know, lots of endorphins, lots of wonderful neurochemicals that are going to help you to strengthen your healing system. 
And so that's the world that I would love to see where a doctor prescribes work with Michelle, let her teach you how to activate your orgasmic potential, and you're going to be so creative. So like for wow. all these musicians and artists, actors, all the creatives, mm -hmm. get to know your whole body orgasm because it just gives you this, you know, anybody have that's had, like a writer that is stumped. Yeah. yeah I was going to say, have you had clients where you've, they've been stuck in their career or they've been stuck in like their writing or creativity and you've helped them? Mm -hmm. I've helped people yeah. get pregnant. I've helped people overcome like a woman 60 years old, her first time ever orgasming. A man oh having whole body orgasms that doesn't even have an erection. I mean, this is a whole other topic where men don't even know that they can have whole body orgasms and they don't have an erection. And they're like, how is this possible? And so men don't even know that they can have an orgasm, another orgasm, another orgasm, another one. And then they can ejaculate if they want. <laughs> and so... Sometimes I wish I could educate, like go to every high school and teach teenagers about their sexual energy because I see how teenagers are just, they, I don't even know how they do this. And, and like for a young girl to have sex at a young age, what is even the purpose of that? She's going to think sex sucks, you know, <laughs> because yeah. that's not even the age, you know. And so Tantra empowerment, knowing how to command your energy, not to have sex necessarily, but just commanding this energy for yourself is so empowering and so that's a whole other topic that maybe we could do another little talk on yeah right when yeah little. This is the first the first swing at it <laughs> I yeah we're like oh should we talk about it hmm? and then i was like yeah I, we were Let talking about know, we talk you about know it i would love it if people comment you know write to rob and if there's any topics that came up share with me i would love for us to open up even more the healing power of orgasm and there, there's just so many couples out there that are bored when I'm like, oh my God, there's so many fun things you guys could be doing together that I really wish like every church, I could be like, before you get married, let's do a Tantra session. You know, you're gonna, live, <laughs> you're gonna have the happiest marriage ever. And especially when men say, oh my God, you know, my wife, she takes forever to orgasm and she can only orgasm in one position. And I'm just like, oh my Lord, it's not your job to make her orgasm. It's her job to be orgasmic. And then yeah. couples can really have fun because it's not up to the man to make his wife or his girlfriend something. That's not empowering him or her. And so Tantra is really awesome because you both are energized or bunnies. And it's just you get to have fun playing with this energy. It's kind of like cool. Ooh, you know, we're, we're so alive that <laughs> it doesn't matter what you're doing. You're just like, wow. Believe me, I wish I could make videos about it. It's just. Um, I'm not quite there yet. <laughs> yeah, right. I was going to say, that's got to be a touchy. personal thing. Yeah, mm -hmm. but it's so beautiful. I wish, I didn't even know, you know, about these things until I was really just the last three years of my life. And so I'm so grateful, so grateful. And, and I'm, I'm open to how I can create more content that is private and, and really teaching people so I'm, I'm kind of in this place of how else can I bring it? So I appreciate all comments, feedback. Yeah, because you're, you're, you're trying to create your, your like online programming. Yeah. yeah, membership site. So that you, you have total from, control. I was banned from Facebook and I was banned from YouTube for posting content about tantric massage, yoni massage, sexual massage, because those two words together, sometimes people don't understand that it's actually blissful and spiritual and sacred and so there's such a misunderstanding yeah so when i talk about sex i'm talking about your whole body becoming the whole universe you know it's very very or people probably view that as like a massage parlor trick where in reality it's like there's so much more to it right yeah and, and even with porn you know porn is a very um there's a lot of research on porn and I know that it is not going to lead a man to a healthy erection. There's actually men that lose erectile function because they're addicted to porn. And so the neurochemistry of your brain is really shifting away from a healthy neurochemistry because of it. And so this is the thing where Tantra is, is a healing solution for men that watch a lot of porn to heal and to reprogram the mind and yeah. start to create a healthier. I mean, if I couldn't have an erection because of porn, 
and I'm a man and that I know how important an erection, a strong erection is, I would definitely want to seek out Tantra, you know, sexual healing. And, and I, I feel this is the best for that. You know, of course, clinical psychologists, but they're not necessarily working with that part of the body. So there's a lot of that happening in the world where people are, it's just, we don't talk about it. So. Yeah, it's like purposely tabooed. And like we were saying earlier, like the, the pharmaceutical industry is going to definitely cut off some of that stuff anyway. I mean, a doctor prescribing a session with you versus like, take this pill. I mean, yeah, it's okay because people find me, Rob. It's amazing. Yeah, so hopefully you keep expanding your your yeah your reach. yeah. So that's why it's good. You, you know that your your goal to create this online programming would be great because you'd be able to serve more people. Um, because you want to be limited by the time factor because people could just buy into it. So that would be huge. That'd be exciting. Hopefully that takes off, and I'm really rooting for you in that sense. Yeah. Is there any? That, yeah. What? No, I was gonna say. Well, no, no. You go first because I was gonna ask yeah. you about yeah. how ask people me. can reach out to you and how people yeah. and like. What's like the best go, way go for to, people to go find to Michelle you? Alva TV, Michelle Alva TV, YouTube, subscribe to my YouTube channel. That's what I would. Also, oh, you're still on YouTube. Oh, yeah. You're just yeah, like yeah. banned for a minute. Yeah. Well, certain videos awaken your okay. sexual energy. Yeah. Um, yeah. So subscribe to my I would love it if everybody goes to Michelle Alva TV, M-I-C-H-E-L-L-E-A-L-V-A TV and subscribe to my channel. After you've subscribed to Rob's, of course, <laughs> and um, and then and then just watch videos. There's content there. There's sexual empowerment videos. There's meditations that are powerful. There's awesome content there for self love, intimacy, um, and then of course you can go to my website michellealva.com, and that's it. Reach out to me. You can schedule a 15 minute clarity call. I, if anybody's interested in working with me. I love for people to ask me questions that no one else can answer. You know, sometimes they're like, I just want to know, you know, and sometimes people hire me just for consultation. They just want a half hour session or an hour to get some things off their chest. It's really amazing. And so I offer group online programs. You could just go, go surf it out, you know, and um, have fun in that exploration and just reach out to me if you want to learn more how to work with me. Yeah, that's awesome. And, and then you're so in terms of your your course work or your membership site, that's still in the works, right? Yeah, well, I have release and heal audio course, which is all about emotional release. I have mm -hmm. Yoni healing and sexual empowerment for women, wild women of abundance, which is all about an abundance <laughs> mindset. I've seen that in your Instagram. Abundant pregnancy for pregnant women. I have and then deeper connection to intro to Tantra videos. So I have a lot. I'm very creative, as you can see, I'm always birthing something new. But it's yeah. all about empowerment. It's all about becoming more of a wave. It's all about receiving. All of the themes are the same. It's just for different people. Yeah, your website has a ton of stuff. You have like events planned all the time. You're always posting things on, on social media, I have Instagram so much as well. Energy and I don't drink coffee. This is what, like, you can run on sexual energy. And that's what I've done. Sexual energy is creative energy. And your heart has to be open to receive it. And so that's literally, I harness that. I know how to do it. I was teaching a little bit of that before. Yeah, that's, I mean, that's, it's amazing stuff. It's stuff that you, we typically, that I would never prescribe myself. So it's good to have someone like you out there that can I'd love to take share the more, baton Rob, from that and, point. And maybe there's something we could do together because I love that you're a PT. You know, we could do something for people that I'm open, you know? Yeah, no, me too. I mean, I love business, that you're a so. PT. I love the work that you're doing. You know, people, you. people need a great PT for their musculoskeletal pro challenges. Mm -hmm. it, there's, that's where you go for that. What I've been talking about, I just want to make it clear, emotional pain. When you don't get the benefits, that this work is for that. Yeah, if you're hitting so a wall over and over So when I have somebody that has back pain that's mechanical, I want them to go to you, Rob. Yes. You I know, I, I have a couple really people in mind that I think people. could benefit from you. Yeah. So maybe I'll I'll let you know who they are or okay. vice versa. You could, you could send my info or send this send this interview. So I just want to say, please, everyone, share this video with everyone you know. Don't keep it to yourself. There's some awesome things we talked about, and definitely check out Rob's podcast. There's so many awesome interviews. Like I just got to make more time in my schedule, and I like listening also when I'm driving. 
So thank you. For oh, wow. You've been listening. Right? You've really been doing your research. I like that. Yeah. I like the public floor PT one. That was really. Oh, cool. yeah. Oh, yeah. He's awesome. Yeah. yeah if yeah, he's he's funny. He's see both of my public floor PT guys have been so great. Something about you guys. It's because you're comfortable with like everything, you know, all of it. Yeah. He was making me blush, you know, on the if you watch the video, he would say stuff. I was like, oh, God, <laughs> but I'm but getting listen, more relaxed I, about it. I, I appreciate so much this time that we've had. And I'd love for people to also comment and let us know. Let's make this interactive. And we're here for you. If there's other topics that you'd like for us to share together, I would love that. Yeah, if anyone wants to give any advice about that, I, I'll put that in my little Instagram uh, comment section. I'll say DM me if you have anything you specifically want to talk about. Because you can go deep on anything. I was looking at the stuff you're involved with. Like, I have so many things I could keep asking you, but I think we'd be better off just doing that at a, another episode in the future. Yeah. It sounds like you might be down for that. Totally, so, totally down. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you so High much. Five. Awesome. Well, thank you, Michelle Alva. It was awesome interviewing <laughs> you. Awesome. I, this is uh i learned a lot yeah and this, being interviewed is even nicer because you just say what you feel you know yeah. thank you Sometimes for holding the space that's beautiful i really appreciate oh, it no worries i'll do it whenever it's I, i'm a i'm a big talker so and i like asking people questions so i like to do these i was like how can i combine these uh these things you know i'm not busy it enough this works out I'm yeah. busy but i, I want to be busy in ways that i enjoy it too so um i like to add in some of these dynamic things like doing interviews so that's i'm glad that you came on and uh i'm excited to have you on again in the future yes. this is dr rob signing off with michelle alva thank you so much bye everyone thank you adios bye bye